Good evening. Uh, I'm Lee Nicholson, uh, and this is Vicky Wilson, and uh, we're going to uh, present to you this evening uh, our uh, our app, which we're currently developing for the uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, in particular to uh, try and address, uh, try and access some of the functionality of the uh, the high quality Pi camera that was released uh, in early 2020. Uh, it's not a, it's a capture, preview, and uh, control kind of app. It's not concerned with editing vid video or any of those things. It's simply concerned with uh, capture in as in as versatile a way as possible. Um, I don't know how many people watching have, have worked with the Pi camera. There are a few quirky things with it. In particular, it's uh, the way it's, its preview functionality works. Uh, and part of building our app was to try and find ways around that. So if you have not worked with the Pi camera, you're going to wonder what we're talking about <laughs> some of the time. If you have worked with the Pi camera, you might well think, oh, that's quite a neat way around that. Uh, then again, you might not. You might think it's, I don't know what you're going to think. You're, mm -hmm. you're out there and we're just kind of doing this thing here. Um, we decided the way we would do this thing is um, show you some examples of some video that we have, um, that we've taken with the app uh, that, um, kind of give some idea of, of, of what, what the app will do. Um, so one of the things was um, we wanted to integrate sound with, with this, uh, so that if you've got a, a reasonable USB sound card attached to, your, uh, attached to your Raspberry Pi, then you could do integrated video and sound recording. And all of the examples we're going to play uh, demonstrate that. Um, the other thing we got quite interested in was the idea, oh, the very unfashionable idea, I guess, of um, digital zooming in the sense that historically people use digital zoom to, uh, you know, go beyond the capabilities of a, of a camera. Uh, we're in a situation here where the camera's got a 4K by 3K sensor and most of what we're interested in doing is at HD, which is about 2K by 1K. Uh, and it struck us that we could do some quite interesting digital zoom things uh, using, by, by basically moving the, the area ar ar around the sensor. Uh, so a number of the examples you'll see, um, there is a zoom going on. Uh, it's not a physical zoom, it's a digital zoom provided by the app. Uh, I think that's probably the only other the only other point I need need to make. So we're going to just let a few examples run. We'll maybe make a couple of comments about them as they do run. And then after that we'll we'll show you the app. And then after that I think it's 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 question time. If you've got any questions then 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 ask them. So here's a few examples. Uh, I should apologize for the guitar player in advance. This was done with the um, official Raspberry Pi 16 millimeter lens. Uh, and you can see you do quite nice depth of field things with it. You've got the sort of the guitarist guys in focus, the, uh, the aloe vera's out of focus. Um, I think the next example is vice versa, isn't it? I mean, we've now got the um, we've now got the aloe vera in focus and the the guitar guy uh, out of focus. It's it's really quite a nice lens, the uh, the sixteen millimeter uh, lens. It's it's very versatile. You can do do a lot with it. That's obviously a static image. We've now got a zoom going on. We're was we're zooming out here, yeah very slow zoom out from the
that zoom's being done in the app. It's not somebody uh, adjusting a, a lens. It's the zoom is being done in the app. We're now zooming in as opposed to zooming out. Most of these videos are just short clips, variations, uh, variations on on that theme, giving you an idea of. Uh, Short, just just a little close as they came off the floor. This is digital in, in the app rather than uh, rather than a physical manipulation of, of the camera. Probably moving on, do you think? Yeah. As I say, you, you've seen one, you've seen them all. So it's, yeah. It's, Thank it's, you. Um, yeah. So if we. Um, we now have a look at the actual app itself as far as we've we've got with it uh and we'll we'll show you what we've got we'll we'll tell you what we haven't got uh and, and kind of where where we are with it yeah so can we run it yeah i think so go go straight into that yeah Send in the wrong. Yeah, wrong direction. You're in code. You should be in the oh, it's not on yeah. the phone. Right. So this is it. The um, the. Uh, it's currently called the Pi Snap app. I don't think it's going to remain that. That 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 word "snap" has been used a lot. I think. Do you want me to ask people to vote on names? Uh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, Have you, you've got one hidden away, haven't yeah, you? It's going no, to be... <laughs> we, we haven't got a name at all. Its working title was Pi Snap, uh, but there is there is clearly a, a Raspberry Pi app called uh, Snap. I think. Uh, so we have we, people can suggest names. We have no idea for a name. We're not even not even thought about that. It, it's <laughs> currently called Pi Snap. Um, here we are, um, and I'm going to go around the four quadrants of of, of the of the screen. We're going to start up here with this uh, with this frame area here, and we can now turn a preview on. Um, Adrian's just got a question. If it's is it all right to interrupt with questions? I, I think yeah, it's actually not bad to take yeah, questions. I think that's that is, yeah, because this not, is what is popping yeah, to no, people's minds. Yeah, yeah. So Adrian asked, um, uh, unless you want to come off mute, Adrian, and ask the question yourself. Yeah. So just to get the bearings, like uh, to see exactly how fast. So what kind of Pi are you using? Memory and what kind of lens? You, you mentioned there was one of the recent lenses, but it would be uh, nice to to know exactly which one. Yeah, it's a, it's a Pi four B. Uh, I think it's the one with the, the maximum memory you can get, which I think is eight. Uh, eight gig. Yeah. Yeah. It's eight, eight gig of memory, Pi 4B. Yeah. Um, there are two lenses recommended for this. The, the actual, the high quality camera doesn't come with a lens. Um, it's, uh, you've got, got to buy the lens as an extra. There's a six millimeter lens. Um, and there's a 16 millimeter lens. That's the one we're uh, we're using. Um, I don't know. Can I show got the overhead camera? The, the, uh, yeah, I can move. Yeah, move to the overhead camera if you want. It's uh, whether you can see that. That's the 16. Uh, that's a 16 millimeter lens there. Um, and that's what all those videos were were taken on. And similarly. Uh, 
the, either this pi or an identical one to it, which is a four B with uh, with the max memory you can get, which we we said was eight eight gig. Yeah, is that sufficient? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're getting nods. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, yeah, if anyone else has got questions, just feel free to yeah, butt in. Feel free to ask. Um, the, one of the things I was commenting about before we started, one of the very quirky things about the whole Raspberry Pi camera setup is this business that the preview is actually provided as an overlay on the video output from the computer, um, which causes, um, I mean, it basically you, you can end up overlaying the preview over the whole screen and then you can't access anything and, and you're faced with having to reboot. Uh, you're also faced with the fact that if you change focus from your app, then that preview still remains on, on top. And we, we did a fair bit of work trying to make that as usable and as user friendly as we could. We've got a number of points on the screen uh, where the preview can be turned on from or off from. The three points is a, can be done from the menu as well. Um, uh, what we consider to be a clever feature of this, but you're not even going to notice unless you're aware of how quirky the preview is, is that if you if we move the um, if we change the focus, then we don't get that screen overlay. We 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 we've dealt with that. And similarly, if you're in the app and you move the app, um, then the preview moves with the app. It's a little bit like those old. Uh, those old mice things with little trailers on it. You move the app and the, 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 pre <laughs> and, and the, and the preview follows. Wherever the app goes, the preview will follow. It's a little bit clunky, but I think it's probably the best way around that particular issue we've been able to find. And there was quite a bit of work went into that. But as I say, unless you've played around with Pi cameras a bit, you, you're just going, well, so what? Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, um, that's fair enough. Um, we move on from that from that preview window, then we go down to the bottom right hand corner and we've got a, a, a tab widget, two, two, two tabs there. We've got a still tab um, and we've got a, a video tab. Um, and in the video tab, you can record a video. Then the still tab, you can record the still. There are separate resolutions set depending on whether you're recording a video or whether you're recording a still. And um, they're set on one of the tabs over there, which we'll get to when we actually get to it. Um, so in the simplest case, if you want to take a, a picture, then you simply click the snap and save, and it moves the pic, takes the picture moves the a thumbnail of it into a little widget there, which is obviously going to contain additional thumbnails. So the idea is everything you take in a session, you can review and look back at uh, and, and see whether you've got what you wanted or whether you need to have another need to have another go at it. Again, the emphasis being on capture and you know some ability to review. What you what you've captured, um, so that is there. Um, currently, the preview is displaying. If we turn the preview off, uh, we can now move. We didn't even need to do that, did we? We can now move. We move that into um, we move that into a, into our frame area. We're now showing the photograph we took as opposed to the preview. It's probably worth moving the camera mm. slightly um, so that. That's currently showing the, um, yeah, if we now show the preview, then that's where the preview currently is. Um, and um, if we wanted to take a, a video, then we'd move on to the video tab. Don't do it, because I'm going to try and do a bit of wittering into the microphone. Hopefully, <laughs> um, we'll do a bit of uh, a sound as well with the uh, video, which again was one of the the things we wanted in this app was to have some degree of uh, integrated sound. On the left hand side, um, there is a. You don't have to. Oh, no, you see, it, it's on the video. The audio is active. Sorry, Vicky. I'm, uh, it's um, so with a bit of luck, if we now take a. If we now take a 
you now start recording a video and uh, I start wittering away into the microphone while somebody waggles their hand in front of the camera in order to establish that there's some kind of movement going on. With a bit of luck, we will have uh, a video with sound on it, which um, that will do us, yeah. Um, so that's going to take a few seconds to get up there. And now with a bit of luck, we can double click that. Um, and uh, I start whittling away into the microphone while somebody waggles their hand in front of the camera in order to establish that there's some kind of movement going on. With a bit of luck, we will have uh, a video with sound on it, which, um, yeah, so that's. Uh, Sounds pretty good as well. Yeah, yeah that is. Uh, <laughs> it's never a successful demo. That, yeah. uh, that is our, our, our integrated sound. Um, there's not a lot else to say there. Um, we're assuming with this stuff, you're going to want pre generated file names. Uh, there's an ability to define a, a file route, uh, and you can then either uh, have, uh, have a date stamped file name or you can have an incremented counter file name. We don't use that at the moment because while a simple bit of program, it's buggy because uh, we haven't spent much time on it. And if you're not careful, you overwrite what you've already done. So I mean, that, that's a little confession there. Um, and <laughs> you can define frame rate. We're generally working at, at 25, uh, but you know there are a number of frame rates available. Um, We'll come back in a little while to use Zoom on record. The only other thing in that area is another way of um, look at handling previews. And that is with this little, uh, little preview navigation um, widget there, which allows you to place, instead of having the preview there, you can move it around the screen. Um, that was an early idea. I think we much prefer the way the way that it works in, in the frame there, but we haven't yet taken it out, so we might as well show it while we're, we're doing this, yeah? Um, and that covers us there. We can go down to the bottom left-hand corner then, um, where you've got a quasi-terminal window, which is basically going to act to provide the uh, user with uh, status messages as to what is going on um, and we're currently using it it does a lot of diagnostic printouts of uh, you know er errors will come up there rather than the thing falling over and uh, but that's um, you know finally will will provide a comprehensive amount of information to anybody uh, using the app again at the moment it's not uh, it's not trustworthy. Sometimes it's telling the truth. Uh, sometimes it isn't. We go up to the top right hand quadrant um, and we've got a bunch of, of items there. If we start with the left current one, which is we're calling it the, the quality tab, it allows us to set a variety of quality settings for the video a variety of policy settings for the audio, and then two little things that relate to the to the audio is whether we want to mux after record, which means currently the way the audio works is we um, we we make a video H two six four file. Um, the audio is recorded as a WAV file, and at the point where the recording concludes. Um, we run an FFmpeg background process to mux those two files together. Um, you don't have to do that. You could leave them as the, the H.264 and as the WAF file, but the output from the muxing is an MP4 file, which is what we were playing uh, back there when we did the little, little test run. On the hard disk, you will find that there is now, with that date stamp, there is a an H.264 file, there is a WAF file, there is an MP4 file, which is the MUX file, and there's a little thumbnail JPEG file that is used somewhere or other, I suspect, up there, yeah? Um, so the only comment there, again, is um, 
currently the 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 app um, has a look at the system and determines what sound interfaces are available. Uh, if there are no sound interfaces, then all the audio stuff is disabled. Um, strictly speaking, it should also inspect as to what uh, settings are available on the sound interface, but that isn't currently the case. This we've like hard coded in some uh, bit rate settings and some sample rate settings that are appropriate for the, the context we're working in, but they're not dynamically generated in the way that the uh, in the way that the it susses out the what sound interface is in there. So that's that screen. Um, I think the next thing we'll look at the adjustments screen. Yeah. Um, is it, has anyone got any um, questions for Lee at, at that point? Or even Lee, have you got any questions? <laughs> have I got any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Have you die of thistle jabs? Yeah. yeah. Obscure question. Yeah. Obscure question. Um, no, carry no, on. Carry on then. Yeah. yeah no okay. Um, when we started doing this, we looked around to see if there was anything similar as as you would, I guess, in in doing any app. And the closest thing we found was that a guy called Bill Williamson, Bill Williams, had developed an app which. Um, there are a huge amount of attributes and settings on these cameras. And he basically built a GUI that connected a GUI widget to every setting on the camera. And there were hundreds of them. And sure enough, you, you know, adjust the GUI and it, it changed the camera setting. And we decided, obviously, that had to be part of the app, but it's not a hugely interesting piece of programming to connect uh, a GUI widget to a, you know, some attribute in the in a in a, in an object somewhere. Um, so we we put a few kind of attributes in which we thought were the most potentially the most useful. Um, one of the areas we'd be looking for feedback uh, from anyone who does make a lot of video is what attributes do you want in there? What changes do you want to be making? What are the things you want to be there? all the time because the answer to that question isn't clear to us mm -hmm. and we'd appreciate input in in terms of that um uh but you know we've put a page of them in and they all kind of work and i think you can uh, you can adjust things and uh you know they all do what they say on the on the tin basically um it's got all the kind of Odd things there. Like, does that work? Yeah, yeah, it is working. There's your emboss thing and some weird thing there. None of that. I don't think we ever used any of it, mm -hmm. but we did recognise that it 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 needed to be there. Um, we mentioned the resolutions tab very briefly when we were looking at the moving between the still and the video settings. And uh, again, there are a whole set of preset video resolutions we've programmed in, and a whole set of, um, of, of still resolutions. We nicked pretty well all of those from Bill Williams' app. Yeah, it seemed the easiest rather than having to type all that stuff in. Mm -hmm. It seemed easier lifting his little uh, his 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 lists out and, and dropping them in. He's also got an ability to custom define any resolution, um, but by and large, the kind of thing we're interested in, we're just interested in, in standard resolutions that people typically are wanting to make videos in. Um, it's worth noting that, um, no, I think we'll, we'll move on to the zooming tool, yeah? Um, this is one of our um, little uh, it's features of the word. This is back at the business. We were talking about the uh, digital zooms and the and the examples we showed. The, this is the area of the app where those are created, and you've basically got a a grey frame there which represents the sensor, and then you've got a darker grey frame 
which represents the current set resolution. And you can move that darker frame around the sensor um, in order to, um, you know, look at different areas of the sensor, basically. And then you can look at those different areas of the sensor in different zoom positions. So if we adjust the, the bottom slider there, um, you'll see that, that the, the gray box grows, but we're actually pulling out, yeah? Uh, the more you pull out, the less scope you've got for moving around the sensor. Um, and that is a fairly intuitive tool to use in order to be able to, to do these zooms. What we can then do is we can define a start point for a zoom. Um, like Vicky's defined the start point there. She's then put it down the bottom. She's defined an end point and we can now run that zoom dynamically. So we're now seeing that that's the kind of thing that was happening in those examples we, we played earlier with the, uh, with the guitar going in on the guitar and coming out on the guitar. Um, the hardest test for these is zooming in and out over a, basically over a still landscape, yeah. Uh, and occasionally it would give itself away on that kind of role. But if there's any kind of movement going on at all, then it, you know, it's totally convincing as, as a zoom. Um, you can, of course, um, having defined a zoom, you can then record video with that zoom running, which is why we've got a, a use zoom rec on record button there. So we can, have, before you do it, you just, yeah, falling over alert. It may fall over during this. Um, not okay. because there's anything buggy here. It's just if you get too many items in that list, there's, there's a segmentation fault error we're getting, which we haven't got to the bottom of yet. It may do it, um, but I'm just warning you, it may fall over. If it falls over, we'll simply restart and, and run this particular little game again. Yeah, go on, do it. Yeah, so this is now recording the Zoom. Um, the video will automatically stop recording when it gets to the end of the uh, when it gets to the end of the zoom. Um, the point where it falls over is at the point where it ends. I think it's something to do with the uh, the sub process running the FFM conversion in in the background. Um, but we'll see. So in that example, you're it's recording done. you're recording the result of the zoom. We're recording the results. So you're not zoom. you're not recording the raw video plus some sort of meta thing. It's just it's, no, no. It's, 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 it's actually processing it. And it's, it's, it, it. it it's 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 running the zoom. There's a, obviously there's a loop which is you know and there's an increment and it's saying the loops you're basically doing it the same as your frame rate. Right? There's no point in doing it faster. Yeah, 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 sure. No, but the out the output is 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 um. Is, yeah. a, is a raw video basically yeah, yeah the, the out the output is the, the zoom is hard coded into the output okay although the, the, there are some interesting questions about that that notion of zooms in in general we're like post, maybe, post zooms and stuff yeah, like we, we're, yeah. Maybe, we're not really interested in doing post zooms here yeah. um and that we're, we're interested in capture mm -hmm. and there's a part of us think that doing your zoom at the time you're doing it is a It's a more clean cut. You're saying, mm -hmm. right, this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, we've set it up and it runs it. And uh, now we're going to take it. Now it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the, we talked the other day about this idea of good enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think that's, you know, what we're seeing this, this saying that is it, it's potentially quite a good blogging tool to have some, uh, you know, zooming facilities there. That are not involved in you having to have little dollies running around the place, yeah, yeah. And all those hardware bits and bobs, or necessarily spending too much time in post production doing that. It's okay, you know. I mean, like the little guy playing the guitar, you know, you can kind of look at that, and there's maybe only three or four vantage points you want, and, and you can just about set that up in advance. And 
you know, maybe a little bit down the line with the um, Compute Pi, we can run two cameras and you could probably set up the whole video and, and do the whole lot at once, almost like the way telly used to work like 40 or 50 years ago when there's some guy going cut from that one to that one, cut to that one, and it's all going out live, yeah, is kind of maybe <laughs> what we had in mind. Do you want to just play that back? I should have put some sound on that as well while we were doing it. But if it, if it's not obvious. This is, this oh, is, it is. Yeah. Controlling that Raspberry Pi camera. Yeah, the mic on. Yeah, I had the mic on, so it has not all that lens. To no, that no, it's all digital. Digital. Yeah. yeah. So there, there is that, yeah. Um, that's pretty much where we've got to with this app, with one exception, and that taking the um, taking the the zoom idea, um, we realised doing the um, doing the doing those little guitar videos that uh, we wanted to be able to chain more than one zoom. Mm. Yeah, we wanted to be able to define a, a sequence of zooms. Going back to the idea of the two cameras with the compute model, a sequence of zooms so that you could go for like three minutes, it zooms in, maybe goes a bit to the left, zooms out, maybe hangs around there for a few seconds, zooms left from its, its, its zoomed out position. So we've got a current, um, there's a, branch in the repository called multi-zoom um, which is where we're working on that uh, again this may or may no, not work um, hugely well who knows uh, but it, it certainly works well enough that we can demonstrate the the, the functionality um, here instead of um, that's not right is it um, It's not going to let you. Uh... Um, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Um, there's no, it's not uppercase dead. It's it's. Uh... Right. That's better. No. It's still not done it because we've got to do git checkout um, settings.json. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning that all the settings in the app as it's run are, are saved until uh, for, 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 yeah. Yeah, you still need to do the checkout of the, the multi zoom because it's, it's never, never completed that process. Hey, yeah. You want to do git checkout multi zoom, yeah. And it's now it's switched to branch multi zoom. Great. Now we can run it. Got this. Uh, yeah, again, you've got the same tool for, um, for navigating around the sensor. Um, but instead of defining a start and an end point, we're now defining points. Yeah, so you define point one, point two, point three, point four, point n, and um, you can define a whole sequence of these uh, of these points, and um, you've got the ability to uh, make adjustments after the event. You can change the change the speed of the zoom. Um, you can also define a gap between the end of one zoom and the start of another zoom. And um, it's basically building a much more complex zooming system um, ar 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 around that idea. Um, so you can define a whole bunch of zooms, then you have to select them. Um, and again, with a bit of luck, I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing anything here. This should run as a, a series of zooms uh, with potentially different speeds 
and potentially I've got all got the same gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're they all should have a resolution. For one second. Asking. Can you do any jumps from one spot? No, to I have no idea. You could <laughs> do if you wanted sorry. to. Yeah, you could do. Yeah. Lee, a question. No, I'm sorry, this is Lee. Lee, do what, do you know what's the uh, raw resolution of the, the camera? Yeah, the raw resolution of the camera is about approximately uh -huh. 4k by 3k okay that's an yeah, hd great. hd resolution is two by one approximately uh -huh. um so it seems to me that if you're doing this kind of digital zoom uh -huh. around the sensor in that way then the best quality you're going to get because yeah. there's no resampling is by zooming at two by one uh -huh. yeah because if you're pulling out then you've got to sample downwards to get or down upwards, depending on which way you look at it. To, you know, the, the only way there isn't a resampling process is if you're if you're zoomed in to that to that uh, to that position. Does that make? I just don't know if I said that very well. <laughs> Did I say that very well? A bit lost. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, but it sounds like it's a very high resolution camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a sufficiently high resolution camera that you can zoom around and still be at your, the zoom of your the, 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 at the correct resolution there's no mm. resampling going mm. on at all are you always doing the resampling to get back to just the lowest high definition i i think the camera itself is doing resampling okay. um i mean in the, in a default position if you it's a bit weird how it all works <laughs> and it, it's it takes a bit of time playing with it to kind of and then it's quite hard to articulate it um well, you've got some very nicely defined interfaces yeah the the, the the i i think that interface is the key to it yeah. if you play with that interface for five minutes you will very quickly see what is going on given that you know that that represents the sensor and that represents the current resolution like literally five minutes playing with it you you will understand it all and i'm very happy when we finish, if you want to spend five minutes playing with it, please do so. Okay, yeah. Um, so we, we, what happened? It, to when it did it? It did, it did it thing. Oh, out of it. <laughs> um, the only other thing with that is you can save those zooms. Okay. Yeah, you can, and then you can load a, a pre-recorded zoom, um, and you can also. Um, select you know a, a subset of the zooms you've defined and you can also it's actually very boring if you've got nine or ten zooms in there and it's the ninth and ten one tenth ones you're working on you can fast forward through it uh so you can go i want to go on to zoom seven and and eight um mm -hmm. this is there's, there's bugs in this this is this is the current yeah. focus of, of of development um so that's about it, really. I'm not not sure what else we can tell you. So certainly that well, you, you were looking for some sort of feedback by the sound of it as well, right? This is the first time you sort of shown shown people. So have you got like any any questions that maybe one or two people might answer on the yeah. on the line? What we want to know is we spent um, quite a bit of work getting it to here. Um, we can currently use it ourselves in that we know where all the bugs are and we know what we want to do. Um, it would be a significant piece of work to move it from here to a stage where it was stable, that you could put it out into the world without having people constantly emailing you saying, why doesn't this work? Why doesn't that work? Uh, and the, the question is, 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 do people perceive that there is sufficient interesting functionality in there that it is worthwhile having an attempt at doing that is one of the questions. Um, the second question, and this would require detailed input rather than uh, just an answer in a session, is um, precisely what attributes do you want to be able to set and precisely how do you want those attributes to interrelate with each other mm. if, if that makes sense that that would it would take some some effort from somebody to give us a help with that we're not video makers uh 
were not really even programmers, if the truth is known, um, but were kind of getting there with both of them. I think those are the two key. Are there other questions or? or... Yeah. It sounds like the second one is for someone who's a sort of a detailed user or would yeah, want to that, use that, it. So that, that, the first it. one sounds kind of interesting. Is like, what well, I guess it's you're you're kind of asking, yeah, have got people got applications in mind that would mean that this is yeah, valuable there, to them? Yeah, there's a, there's, there's no point in doing something that nobody. There's no point in doing a lot of work stabilizing something and making it robust if the general perception of it is well, so what if we wanted to do that we. We do it this way. Yeah. Uh, when getting it to where it is at the moment, did you are you the the the, the, the APIs or whatever you're using to uh, actually communicate the robots? Like, are they fairly straightforward? Or say that again. Is it are the are the APIs that you're using to communicate with the Raspberry Pi fairly straightforward? So, how much of this stuff do we essentially control programmatically? To do if that makes sense, it kind of makes sense. I mean, that is what we're doing, we're programmatically yeah. accessing the, 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 the stuff in the, in the Python library mm -hmm. that is supplied. Okay, so there's a Python library that's supplied, yeah. Okay. There, there is a Python library, uh, and it's quite comprehensive, um, and it's fairly stable as well. But you um, haven't had to put wrap and wrappers or anything around that to make it easier for yourself to use it just? No, it's pretty well the pile library we use as is. Um, there's a number of third party stuff that is in there. Uh, the playback of video is using the, uh, the VLC API. Um, there are a number of conversion processes go on in Python subprocesses using uh, FFmpeg in several places. Uh, we're also, with, with the audio, we're currently switching between using the um, two ALSA programs. Uh, I think it's A record and A play. Uh, and we're also occasionally, well, currently we're using, um, there's a thing called SOX, which is a, Again, a small open source, uh, probably free software uh, library of, of sound record tools, uh, you know, interface snipping tools. Uh, so there's a few third party things in there. Um, and then there is the, um, the whole GUI is, uh, do they call it Qt, Qt, PyQt, is, is the graphic user, user interface. So, Oliver, did you have a question? You seem to come off mute. Uh, yeah. One of the things I was going to say is, in regards to working out whether it's going to be used or if there's use for it, um, one thing would be, can you get the Raspberry Pi blog to actually talk about it and actually ask that question uh, and potentially put a little survey out um, for it to see what, what kind of the, potentially what first features would be interesting. So to save you having to stabilize everything, actually cut it down. Um, and the other thing is, what do you think people would use it for? Obviously, there's, there's a lot of use for it. What would you what would you envisage it being used for at the moment? Um, I seen it as being um, a blogging tool. Um, the the whole zooming functionality is cheap and cheerful um, and does a number of things which, um, you know, you've either got to invest a lot of money or you've got to um, that become very fiddly. Um, and a lot of those things you can explore with that Zoom tool. It is actually quite a powerful thing that yeah. for exploring scenarios. It's a lot quicker going, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that um, with that Zoom tool than it is moving cameras around and moving little, you know, hardware objects around um, to do that. Um, I suspect there are applications of this um, in stop motion video 
Um, and again, it, it seems to me that there is a neat way of combining stop motion video with that zooming facility. So that yeah. you, you might, for instance, you could, uh, you know, I mean, just taking what, what is on the table here, you could zoom out to everything on the table, yeah? And then be zooming in, at which point it becomes apparent that some mouse in the corner there is, is actually dancing up and down. Mm. Um, and that, and that would seem to be transforming it from a tool that is almost like a utility tool mm. to like an application tool, you, using all the tricks that you've worked out how to do. Because right? as a stop motion tool, I, I can sit, totally see your idea of, oh, we, you know, I want to do a panning shot. I want to do a zoom shot. I want to do a, yeah, do yeah. a made up dolly shot. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah, and that's that sort of stuff. Exactly, yeah. uh, um, that's yeah. exactly the idea is to, uh, you know, it's a cheap and cheerful thing. You know, I mean, yeah. nobody who is serious about video is going to do them on a Raspberry Pi, I suspect. On the other hand, I suspect that Python library is sufficiently rich that you can potentially do some really quite yeah. clever, cute things. But also um, things like uh, um, time lapse and stuff like that as well. Yeah, because yeah. time lapse with a dolly shot, yeah. if you know what I mean, is, yeah. is a really natural thing to do. And, yeah, yeah. Um, One of the things that um, seems to crop up in my mind a bit is actually there's, there's some open source, um, open source micro, microscope kit that people build. And I don't know if they have planning tools to say like once you've got your microscopic image you need to be able to quite often go search it move yeah, around yeah. Like, possibly do those like gradual transgressions yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and they probably have rubbish quality cameras or you have to use a phone yeah. or something well, well. yeah so i don't know i think the the top quality ones i, I think they're built using raspberry pies and things like that oh, okay and, and yeah and they might i mean this might be the exact type of stuff that would help with some of those problems yeah. because yeah, I mean, what their amazing project, what they're doing is helping getting microscopes into places like all schools in Africa. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, might be yeah, I, 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 I can see that as well. Yeah. We, I mean, it's one of the things I did, the, the Pi Mag, is it Pi Mag Pi, yeah? The Raspberry Pi magazine. Mm -hmm. I'm never clear whether it's Pi Mag or Mag Pi. Is it Mag Pi or yeah. Pi Mag? Yeah. It's Mag Pi. Um, we emailed the woman there, basically, um, I, with the idea of doing a couple of tutorial files, um, one being the integrating sound with the high quality camera, which you could do a tutorial on, and it's quite interesting, I suspect, people would be interested in that as a tutorial, not as a, you know, just as some code to, to do that. Um, and the other was, um, to do uh, a tutorial just around the zooming uh, functionality. Um, I was going to invite her tonight, but I forgot all about it. And I never heard back from the email. This is the first time we've been out with, with this. Uh, you know, we don't have contacts particularly mm. in, the, in the Raspberry Pi community, although we are in Cambridge. Yeah, um, so it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be too hard to, and I, to get I, them. I think we need, we need to build some, some contacts up and become a, a part of that at this point in time. So I certainly think this could really fit in with actually going into Raspberry. Um, right in there. Sorry, I, I've got two Hang people. On, so, sorry, um, yeah. Oliver, we only got the lapel mic set up so you probably couldn't hear brian asking a question so is it all right if brian goes first and we'll come to you adrian uh, oh, oliver sorry yeah I'll, I'll wait yeah sorry about that um, yeah i was just saying I've, I've got quite a few contacts i, I help run the global cambridge raspberry pi jam um, i've been employed in that pi magazine in the past um, i think some of the writers are right um, and uh, i have quite a large following on twitter Right, that would be we, we we need to become part of that. I think we need we need yeah. to. Uh, I mean, it's it, or as Oliver says, just even to get the first feedback, right? Where you if to put out a question, you yeah. Know, that would, uh, maybe yeah, maybe yeah. talk to Brian afterwards. Yeah, can we can we talk yeah. afterwards? That would that would be really useful. Yeah. So sorry, Oliver. Back to you. Uh oh, it's been too long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you have any particular, uh, you, you were asking about use cases, was that pure intrigue or did you have some in your mind as well? Or? Well, 
as, as kind of you were showing the thing that that oh yeah that's the thing i was going to say is is it it could certainly fit into raspbian it would make sense for it to be installed just as raspberry config has come in and that kind of thing this looks really it would be a really nice starting point for people who start using who can then go oh i can do this with it and get into the python library um, the other thing I was going to say is when you were demonstrating it, the thing that struck me was uh, wildlife photography or watching. Mm. Um, if just as a just a lovely extra feature um, would actually be uh, motion detection. So you can just say, look here, and you can zoom it on wherever you want to and say, if anything, if you see anything moving, record yeah, more. I, yeah, yeah. yeah I think is, this is really interesting. So, yeah. you, I mean, you, you mentioned blogging, right? For me, that doesn't seem... Like it seems like you've got the power over a camera that is a like a camera that can do things that others can't, right? You know, this is the sort of I, thing. I, I think it is a camera. As Oliver's saying, it, you can embed yeah, it in this yeah, thing, it, or you it, put it in yeah, a. Yeah, it, it's a camera that can do things that others can't, and we're really just kind of starting out on yeah. that. I mean, the. the that's, that's why things like the stop motion or the time lapse yeah, or the, 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 the wildlife the, cam yeah, motion the, detector, the, the, or they the, all seem the, really the, interesting. The, there are yeah. a whole bunch of things. Yeah. That 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 could be done. Um, must be something to do with robots, hey, Brian? Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, was, I was just thinking that they, they wouldn't really be a big ball camera like you saw the ones before, but if it's for the market's cameras and you've got things like things for webcams and stuff like that, it works like Yeah, that. yeah. But having something that you've got the flexibility to be able to uh, make it, it'd be great for all the introduction cameras to be. Mm. Yeah. Would it be possible? I, I, you, you came in quite late. Um, could we repeat a couple of the videos that we played at the start, which was, was we, we, I mean, I'd seen it to a degree as being a, a, a tool for making music videos was, was kind of where I, I came from, which is, you know, you're kind of some musician. And what you want to do is you want your music video to look expensive, yeah? yeah? Um, and so, you know, our, a lot of our early experiments were, you know, here's a bloke playing a guitar and now it's zooming in on him. And suddenly it looks more expensive than just here's a bloke on a guitar and here's a bloke on a guitar and here's a bloke on a guitar. Yeah, people. I know, I know this is its first outing, but what's interesting to me is that's not what people are saying back to you. So they're they're saying like these in the things that exploit the control yeah, you have over yeah, the camera, yeah, I, which is really I, interesting. I, yeah. I, I I understand that, yeah. uh, and I rather suspect if we keep going, I mean, it's a little bit of background here. This started in that I've got some programming background, but but no Python. Um, Vicky is um, has no programming background, but wanted to learn programming, and you know, really just before the pandemic, we were talking about this mm. and, uh, you know, I kind of said, well, why don't we both learn Python? Um, and it started from there to kind of veer towards this. I bought a couple of the cameras by then and was playing around and it gradually began to, uh, you know, crystallize into mm. what it is. But it, it was primarily when we started, it was a, uh, an exercise in learning in learning Python. We were both yeah, learning awesome, Python, yeah. but from quite different, uh, quite different starting points. And the whole, I mean, up until what two or three months ago, it was all done remotely. It was all done over Zoom using right. <laughs> um, and 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 so it's 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 only just starting to come out into the into the light now and. Uh, a year on, it kind of feels it's reaching a point where it's doing something interesting. Mm -hmm. It's been hugely encouraging what people have, have said. Yeah, yeah, this, it's this, really this, interesting. this evening because we was it was there any other um, so Oliver, I, I think um, uh, a, anyone else got any sort of questions or suggestions or things they think? Oh, actually, this, this is interesting for some reason. Yeah, I think I can uh, try a couple of them. So uh, there was that question about those, you know, millions of settings and your quest to find out what settings to put in the user interface. Um, from some previous experience, I I kind of know that you're never going to find everybody requesting the same settings. 
one of the uh, uh, end, you know, you kind of might be dragging to one direction and the other one, and that would that would that would add a, a you know maybe even frustration. One of the ways I've seen it done with, and actually I kind of recommended in the past, is if you can add them all and and uh, expose them to like a very simple search interface where the the, the user types the the name of the setting and you just come up with a text box and the, and the user can can type the parameters in there that that might be uh an easy way to deal with all of those or something like kind of like um, maybe like a spreadsheet like a table and yeah, I, I i i i have begun to have thoughts along that line myself that what is needed is not so much as you say not hundreds of settings but the ability for the user to go in there and say, I want this setting. Mm -hmm. And that they can then, uh, I mean, you very, very easily. I mean, one of the nice things about the Pi camera classes is um, that um, all the attributes that tend to be, uh, that tend to also in the class be dictionaries containing all the potential settings. So mm -hmm. like your contents of drop down boxes in your GUI, you're simply pulling them out of pre-existing dictionaries. There's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of grunt typing stuff involved in that. And it's a, it's only one step from that from saying, OK, you want this attribute to saying, right, we just generate the widget that allows you to control that attribute with, with the drop down box, which is kind of more interesting than programming long lists of mm. GUI widgets. Well, especially yeah. if it's sort of what Brian was saying, like it, if it's like a default app that you can go and explore a feature, like mm. there, there is no middle ground. You, you kind of want to give, I presume you just want to give people the access to play with whatever the experiment they want to do is, right? It's, yeah, I think, I think that the advantage is, first of all, nobody can complain that, oh, I don't have access to that attribute, that that stops me, and I'm not going to wait another month before you're going to be able to put that attribute in. The second advantage is, in time, you might actually use that as a, almost like a, a collection tool to find out what attributes people look more often in, and that might help you to, to bring some to the, uh, to the UI. I, at this point, when I'm looking at the application, it's fairly generic, uh, and it can probably be used for many, many, many types of applications. Yeah. Uh, the, the stop motion, uh, uh, it's kind of interesting. For that, I would see something that you should be able to maybe kind of um, record some kind of scenario with a, with a series of zooms and pan, uh, panning and motion and stuff like that that can be that can be done by just uh, by just starting that new script or something like that. Um, I was personally, I'm more interested to, um, I'm, I'm more like coming from like molecular biology kind of devices that, you know, like kind of take a picture of a Petri plate, the Petri dish and uh, look at the yeah. colonies and stuff like that. So I was looking more like, okay, can I use an application like this and then also take the image later on and, and process it or maybe even integrate my other other uh, robotic features with the application itself uh, so that that was my uh, where it was coming from mm. i think yeah. that's roughly along the same lines you, you might stop the people you might stop the uh, software they got earlier on which is like there is i think there's some pretty good areas in that sort of field yeah, actually, there's a there's a, a microscope. It's called Open Flexure, and it's actually with the Raspberry Pi. I did not use it yet, but I was looking at uh, maybe use it in some of my applications, and that might be interesting to uh, well, something kind of I, understand. I I'm around me, is it? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I bought I bought a microscope off them. Um, just never had the chance to uh, to look at it as yet. It's it's. Uh, I mean, it's always the same with this. You've got it yeah. really quite hard maintaining the focus on, 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 yeah, on something. Uh, along uh, a, a similar line to what Adrian was just mentioning, um, when I was up at uh, NIAB, so the you know the people doing the uh, plant science um, yeah. just at the top of the hill, yeah. um, they were doing um, super resolution where um, they were actually growing a seed in a medium, mm. but because it grows slowly, they could scan effectively a camera you know, like do a 2D scan of the 
you know, transparent growing yeah, medium that's yeah, in, yeah. and then do it again and then do yeah, it again yeah. and get a mega, mega, mega high resolution picture of it growing, a video yeah, of it growing, yeah, right? Yeah. Because because it grows slow enough that you yeah. can effectively do a scan. And uh, I'm not saying, I don't think, I mean, your application doesn't do that at the moment, but it's those, those feel like the really interesting applications yeah, where yeah, yeah. someone doesn't want to program the camera I from scratch, think, yeah. but they do have to set up these scenarios or these sort of yeah, like macros yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's like... Yeah. And yeah, then you, wanted, sorry, go ahead, Adrian. Uh, yeah, one example that I can give you, like I was, I almost got involved with this. There's a, an application done by the medicine, uh, by uh, Doctors Without Borders. So what they do, they try the um, antimicrobial resistance. So the way you do that, you take a sample from the patient uh, and you make a petri dish with, where that thing grows uh, fairly uniform. And then you drop some little, paper discs, each one of them impregnated with a different type of antibiotics, okay? So if uh, specific, if that specific, uh, I don't know, let's say bacteria from that patient is um, sensitive to that antibiotic, you, by taking pictures of it, you're gonna see a disc around your disc with the antibiotic that of dead, uh, dead bacteria, right? So, uh, so basically you take the picture, you look where the, uh, the discs uh, appear of dead bacteria and you see how, how fast it expands and, and, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so there's a start, some, yeah, so that'll be like time, time lapse and, you know, a little bit of, uh, of uh, maybe AI or maybe not even AI to figure out how, how fast that uh, which antibiotics will, will kill around the killing field and stuff like that. But there's also some other, a little bit more complicated because in some cases you need two antibiotics to do the, the killing. So, so uh, even a video or a time lapse might also uh, help. And that's a fairly basic application in field. That's how basically if you go to a hospital and if you uh, if they try several antibiotics, thinking that oh, that's my work, this my work, that's my work. At one point, they're going to say, okay, well, let's take a sample and uh, let's uh, uh, let's find exactly which one is going to work. So this is an another type of application that I was thinking that something like this would be very useful, especially since you you give some uh, some of the basic functionality and and uh, and it will be very successful, I think. Yeah, cool. This is all really interesting. Uh, and Adrian, Tava, Adrian, you had um, some questions as well. Do you want to come off mute and ask them? They were quite interesting. Yeah, a couple of things. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Um, one of the things was you were talking about various extra controls that you might and might need. And um, some of them are very obviously applicable to what I want to do, and some aren't at all. Um, I was wondering if you could have kind of an extension architecture as you have in typical browsers, so that you could easily add in uh, extra controls for things which some people have and some people don't, um, and have them in the same context. Um, for instance, um, pan tilt zoom heads and uh, maybe a time lapse system or something like that. Yeah, I I I, I think that in in ter there's, there's, this is the functionality available to us in 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 the uh, in the in the actual hardware of the camera and the uh, the Pi camera classes that that expose that functionality. To us, um, I think a lot of that, as we said, is we can we can set up a situation so that people basically just, you know, tick off. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. I don't want that. And you know, by and large, it should be possible to generate most of that code uh, in accordance with what the user wants. Um, then is that second question of. People are obviously talking about different applications, stop motion video, uh, microscopic applications. Um, I think the the architecture of the thing currently is such that it will be possible to drop in modules. I mean, the, the business of these, these tabs here, um, we, the zooming tool is really the first 
of what mm. might well be a series of things. There might then be the stop motion tool, there might be the, the microscope tool, who, who knows? But I think the, the, the way the thing is designed, it's not hard slotting in additional things across mm. there. Um, so you are going to get yeah, this army knife approach, right? It's, it's, I, I don't know. I mean, okay. as, a, as, a, as I say, we got it to here. This has been hugely valuable just in terms mm. of getting the, the feedback at the end has been hugely valuable. Um, and, um, you know, I think it will be nice from here to kind of, I don't know, write down a few specs and bounce them at people and say, what if we do that? Or what if we do that? And then people can say, well, that's not very interesting or, or whatever, do it that way. So that, or, or even like take it up a level and it's like, what about this use case? What about this use case? Yeah, you know, yeah. some of these you're talking about, I think, have other alternatives. You know, blogging or some at some level has lots of alternatives. You can I, do it on your phone. I, 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 and other things you yeah, really don't. And yeah. maybe that might be yeah, really interesting. I, I, I yeah. understand that. And I mean, you probably know more about that. Well, you obviously know more about that than I do. Uh, you know, and I mean, it's part of my background. I'm going to go, well, I want to make music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, I can also see there's more to life than uh, <laughs> than, than that. Um, yeah, what, what strikes me is you've got a camera here that's incredibly powerful, but can be rigged in all sorts of, you know, this is the sort of camera that people would imagine putting into a project, putting into a something, I don't know. And and then they're looking, well, how, if only I could control it, it feels like. Yeah. If you're ever looking at for a title, I personally think to part a really good way of gathering, um, in my opinion, that type of feedback. If you look on the internet, there's something, uh, Raoul, I mean, I can't remember the name, but he just specified that he, he calls it a product of anything. So it's just a technical difficulty. Yeah, but it's a really nice way to gather that feedback. Yeah. That's what you were thinking. I don't know. It's a good But it, it can be really helpful if people are saying lots of different things yeah. at just tuning in. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can, can I just check if anyone else on the line has any other um, questions or suggestions or anything? Um, I can see a few people haven't said anything, which is fine. Um, but this is probably the last shot that we should probably wrap up now, right? Just to yeah. give and make sure that people have got a way to contact you afterwards. Sure, yeah, yeah. I can do that. I'm, I'm well, having a yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Can I give that now, or can you distribute it? I'll, do, I'll distribute it, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Better, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and we'll can link to anything you want or Great. whatever. Yeah, 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 good. Okay. Certainly my suggestion would be don't try and um, reinvent the wheel or compete with like OBS Studio or anything that's really already there. I think the strength of this is having that full control over a specific camera on a very popular platform. Yeah. Um, and to save you the effort of a very, very, very long, probably quite de degrading, not degrading, uh, troublesome development of getting this stable, I would go with the get some features finished and polished and either build in a method of requesting more um, and actually talk to Raspberry Pi themselves and see if over time you can actually get it included in Raspberry and because it makes sense to have a good program built in that can be oh. built up over time. How was, I mean, I wouldn't even need you said that. I wouldn't even know how to start doing that. As I say, I, we, we offered a couple of articles to the magazine and, and didn't get a reply. So um, what is the best way? I think we're a bit, a little bit away from that, to be honest. But uh, it's, that is a hugely encouraging thing you've said there. Yeah, I, I would I wouldn't try and finish everything before trying to release it. I would get something that's that's, that's good, that's stable, of the core features. Yeah. And we, either way or just the time you have, add to it. Otherwise we, you're gonna spend forever until you launch. Yeah. We we thought about stabilizing what we've got by the end of the year. Does that sound a sensible time frame or um 
I, I, I would suggest the important thing is working out what potential users would want. Because it might be the case that there's there's some stuff in there that might not be used very much. Um, so it wouldn't make sense to spend a lot of time getting that perfect. I don't know what that is, but you might find that. Get that, get that, yeah. Um, so I, I would go with stabilizing a little bit of it um, or kind of a, a, a good viable product and then release that in some way um, and then start to build on that as you, as you get feedback. Yeah, okay, thank you. That'd be my suggestion because <laughs> someone might come, you might finish it and some might go, oh, can we have this? And it'll be the perfect feature that would have been easy five months ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you could spend too long trying to, yeah, no, on, on I, too I, much of it, right? I, I understand that. Yeah. 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 Lee, I think it's a good idea that you don't aim at a particular project, but make your software as a tool. For example, you create a feature saying people have access to the center point of the middle. Mm -hmm. For example, if I, I were to be a developer, so I, I'm doing something about CV that is face recognition. So I know where the face is in that whole image. And at the same time, I, will, I want to always put my face in the middle of the live stream. So if you provide that interface, someone is very easy to do their second round of development on top of mm. your software, which makes your software very popular and you don't have to worry about what application people actually want yeah. to do. Yeah, no, I can see that as well. Do you, do you think there's someone, and maybe this is questions based on what Oliver and, and Brian have said, is there someone that Lee could go and speak to who perhaps would understand a bit more about what it would take or whether they would be interested in what it would take for this to become that sort of native application or whatever, you know, so because it's obviously not ready for it yet. No, yeah. But if there's someone who could take them under their wing and go, well, no, this doesn't make sense. This, Oh, no, this has the potential. Oh, and by the way, this is what it would take or something that might be really useful. If people thought that the, not the, the project that we have to have Oh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it on the, I'll put it on YouTube. Because yeah. you, you probably are looking for, for someone who just knows the arena and can kind of take yeah, you under their wing and yeah, say, look, yeah, this that, is that would be really yeah, useful. This is yeah, how to think yeah, about that, that, that is exactly what, what, what is mm. needed at, at mm. this point yeah. in the right town. <laughs> So that this would be more rather than trying to make a stop motion app, make it so someone could almost write the configuration extras to, to, it, to be able to, to use it as a yeah. stop motion app or as a that, that, whatever. That, yeah. that, that is interesting. And that seems to yeah. be the approach you've taken anyway. It's quite yeah. it's quite a utilitarian yeah. tool, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Because in some sense that that camera, it's by its nature, presumably, is it's a uh, you know, it's one of these jack. Uh, it's got the opportunity to go into lots of different, well, it, you, niche it, applications, right? That's almost you, this you, point. You, right? you can fit any C or CS lens onto mm. the onto this camera. So, but the reason you're using that versus a phone or a DLS, DSLR or a webcam is it's presumably it's doing something that those can't, right? No, it's it's, it's, a, the, it's the five camera library. It's the, yeah, it's exactly. The, it's the ability to program. Yeah, what it's doing, I think, is 
I don't know that it's unique. I suspect if you go into places like Pixar or Aardvark Animation, sure, sure, sure. they'll have yeah. things in there that they spend. But that's not generally accessible, developing. right? Most people yeah, do stop like, motion on yeah. an iPad and that's what they're limited yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't want to put an iPad there. Yeah, I, I think we can potentially do some quite clever things with that library, um, particularly with this generation of the camera, yeah. was what attracted me in the first place. Um, what those clever things are, I, as, you know, I've got a very narrow view. Let's have a geezer playing the guitar and zoom in on it. It's, it's yeah. something, yeah, that, you know. Yeah, that, 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 that's right, yeah. Yeah, the If you want to try like the stop motion, maybe a, a, an easy test would be to just, you know, Take any animation that you like, take like one second of that and see, can I reproduce that with the camera? It's not easy to set up some demos of, uh, mm. of, of stop motion video with that zoom integrated into it. And I think they could be quite cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you think about that, that's all about the dolly with a moving camera. Yeah, and thing. yeah, yeah. But, um, exactly. Yeah, stop motion is quite popular with schools and stuff. Yeah. How, how, but, but how you might integrate it into the tool might be, you know, the, the way you approach it of what Brian's yeah, saying of it yeah. being more like someone can extend it to do that and that thinking about how you would do it, but it not becoming that as a product. So it's not as it's how you've configured it to do that. It's really quite interesting. How important are things, for want of a better word, show reels? Yeah. How important is it to have some examples? Oh, to I, I, I think that helps yeah because it's a, it's a very time intensive process yeah. creating yeah. show reels but i think it's the classic thing is how, how do you explain it to someone right? yeah um, on the other hand it's, it's been obvious you know the couple of people who play it's the it's the stuff we've done that has impressed people like you come in here and you just kind of you know it's very abstracted from what you can actually do whereas a show room really demonstrates very clearly uh yeah. okay but, but yeah. Saying, you know, that may help to stimulate the excitement that you need for people yeah to yeah yeah that and yeah i think i think the only thing that you could struggle with is being overwhelmed with well No, exactly. And you can practice how you explain what it is as well, right? Because <laughs> it is quite important how you explain what it is you feel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I feel... Is it, yeah, is it you, are you presenting it as a utilitarian tool or a, yeah, or like a Depop app or whatever? I don't know. I think it's, it's a paper thing. It's saying, you know, basically, it, it, it does it, this. Having a camera app, camera app is fine, but, Is really interesting that's always surprised me that yeah. that is the case. Uh, maybe maybe yeah. Yeah. maybe it will soon hey yeah. Yeah. can i suggest we wrap up because it's uh, nine o'clock right um that was that was yeah that was great that was really interesting I, um thanks for everyone else on the line as well um any last questions before we wrap up we'll turn Oh. Yeah, well, okay, so we'll, um, we'll 
we'll chat afterwards and we'll make sure that we can share with everyone a contact and then hopefully you can follow up with anyone who's Good. Yeah, um got some stuff yeah. which is right. yeah do you want to just basically you the summary is you're looking for feedback you're looking for guidance and input and potential users i guess Correct. yeah yeah all right awesome yeah. so if, if anyone knows anyone who's doing projects that might be interested in this as well but aren't on the call um when we send out the details maybe you can forward it to them or something i think that would be really helpful to me okay yeah all right awesome thank you very much thank you, thank you. thanks everyone <clears throat> thanks.